Hello ladies and gentlemen of YouTube and welcome to another episode of Finalysis, Avatar The Last Airbender. I am ready for with me today, as ever, GreyJedi91. Hey guys. And Antoine Bandele. Be water, my friends. Take it away, Matt. Okay, so today we're going to be covering book one, episode four, The Warriors of Kiyoshi. Um, this episode, uh, the A-plot has the gang um, sort of learning life lessons as they... Um, get to a, an island called Kyoshi Island, named for a past avatar. Uh, the B-plot involves Zuko um, relentlessly chasing the avatar, as ever. And we, the fans, will be introduced to two different varieties of fangirl along the way. So, uh, taking us away, Antoine. <laughs> uh, so the first thing we have is Zuko um, doing like his little meditation, and then Iroh tells him about uh, how they can't find uh, the avatar. I thought it was really interesting because Zuko... I like how like the breathing he was doing was making the flames like kind of inflame up a little bit and then come back down. I thought that was a little, nice little touch, uh, but I also thought it was funny like the whole the one the one liner at the end where he's like, "Oh, he's a yeah. tactical genius," and then he's like, <laughs> "I don't think you know which way you're going, Aang." He's like, yeah. I'm just, "It's by the ocean somewhere, man." Yeah, I like yeah, that, that just, scene as a callback. He's just the, lost. Yeah, he's completely lost. Um, or not even that, just taking uh, just t detours for the hell of it sometimes. <laughs> Um, I, I like how uh, the scene is a callback, obviously, to the breathing comment from Iroh as well. You know, it's, fire bending is all in the breath, so obviously with meditation you'd be taking deep breaths and the fire would be swelling and retracting. Um, and also that Zuku clearly values his meditation time. Um, it's, an, it's a side to him we've not seen um, thus far. Uh, the kind of, not necessarily patient is the wrong word, but um, he tries to be introspective. Um, so, you know, he's, he's, irks, he's irked when Iroh interrupts him for anything less than the avatars, information on the avatar, basically. Um, I like that they take the time to set to kind of open this episode with a quiet scene um, of Zuko that who isn't really in this episode as much um, as he has been previously, and will be later. It's like it's one of the ones where he's he's more absent. of a straight antagonist for, for yeah this yeah for this one. So they, they take at least the opening moment in the opening to bring in some sort of a a light smattering of, of introspection. For the yeah, character. it's a nice way of it's a nice way of establishing in, that in this episode things aren't going Zuko's way because he's interrupted like doing something at his ease like with bad news like oh yeah we have no idea of where he is he's like oh what you know and then he's has the comedic line or it becomes comedic like he's clearly a master of evasive maneuvers um, or master tactician or whatever and it's uh, <laughs> it, that's an example of them doing comedy well because it's fairly subtle compared to like pie in the face or right. um, so, some of the stuff they've done previously. Aang is like one of those uh, friends you have if you go on like a road trip who like always wants to stop off at yeah. every place even though you have <laughs> a clear destination. You're like, oh, let's go like have the biggest wiener ever. It's like, no. Uh, we have a shut door. <laughs> yeah, and unfortunately in this case, it would be his car. <laughs> I mean, he'd be yeah, yeah, yeah. So, I mean, it's even worse. Like, it's not like the kid who needs to stop. Oh, it's the driver who wants to do that. <laughs> Yeah, yeah. So it sucks. Uh, then we have the scene with uh, bringing up sexism again, as we had very early um, in, in the series. But again, Sokka and Katara butting heads uh, with the whole, "Oh, you can sell because you're a girl," and then like guys are are good for the hunting and fighting. Which I don't. I'm not trying to sound like um, like a, like sexist or anything like that. It's not necessarily wrong. Not he's wrong about the sewing part. Anyone can sew, really. But the part about men being more suited for like physical uh stuff like hunting or or and all that kind of stuff that's that's just how humans have developed over time you know that's just how our biologies work if you take like the strongest dude and the strongest woman the strongest dude is going to be the strongest back of when, the two yeah back when physical dominance was the you know the power in the world um, right. men have the power it's just biological especially with um, a hunter gatherer um uh, society mm, not true anymore and not relevant anymore um, rather, but yeah, uh, not and specifically not relevant here, which we'll see in a bit. Um, but so you, I mean, you can understand why Katara is irritated, obviously, and Sokka's being a bullheaded prat. But at the same time, you know, you understand where he's coming from. At least, you know, it makes sense the kind of root of his of his thinking, um, if not the actual carry through. Yeah, I also think that, like on on some level, um, a, a lot of what drives her to fire back at him when he gets into that that mode is uh, because she knows how unrefined and unpolished he is like in terms of like those abilities that he's championing he's not like the best of the best in, in any regard yeah. um at this at, at least not in this point in time um so he has like an inflated view of himself um which i think also 
as anybody who has a sibling, you know, like that's automatically going to be ammunition for like this kind of fight. Yeah, definitely. Um, I mean, she, like I said before, he was off playing soldier while she was doing all the work. You know, it's going to be a pain to hear him going on and on about how men do this, women do that when she's doing all of the actual work and he's just messing around. Uh, it, it, it speaks to uh, the scene kind of sp- you get where everyone in the scene is coming from basically which again Avatar is great at doing it very rarely portrays mm-hmm. uh, this person is right this person is wrong even when Sokka is as wrong as he is here <laughs> you at least get where he's coming from um, in the at the moment I always liked how they uh, named their animals in uh, in the show like uh, elephant koi and stuff like that like yeah. they do that a lot they just basically just merge two, two animals together but um, I feel like that's good for a kids show because you don't have to like make all these like weird terms and stuff like that. You have to make up uh, for these creatures. It's just like, oh yeah, I know what an elephant it is. I've seen a koi fish at the mall. <laughs> like you know, like yeah. it's easy to to latch onto. Like oh, what well, would an elephant and a koi like look together? That that sort of a thing. Yeah. Um, so I always thought that was a good choice uh, and, for them to do it like that. Yeah, and that's the ultimate point of the uh, of the initial going to Kyoshi as well. Avatar wants to, uh, Avatar Ang wants to go and surf the koi, elephant koi. Um, you know, simple kid with simple tastes. Uh, <laughs> And he also partially wanted to show off to Katara at this point as well. Um, this is a uh, one of the episodes where it gets a little bit ham-fisted with a lot of the the kind of points it's trying to make, or along with the, a lot of the messages it's trying to send. Um, you know, it's it's trying to big up the whole uh, uh, Ang's kind of interesting Katara thing, and it's also trying to get big up the whole sexism thing so they can hammer in the lesson at the end. It's it's still good, and I like the episode. I like it a lot more than I um, thought I would on rewatch actually. Um, for all of the details that we'll go into later, but it's definitely one of those episodes where it gets a little less elegant and uh, refined in its kind of approach to of, of what it's trying to do, basically. It gets a little preachy. Yeah, a little bit preachy, that. and the, the delivery of everything is a bit off. You know, it, it's not bad, it's just such a step down from what we've been introduced to in the per- first uh, three episodes. And what's later to come, obviously. It stands out. I agree. But yeah, uh, so Ang so uh, they get and gets captured, captured right after after they have fun with the uh, yeah yeah after the Unagi actually sorry introduces the Unagi to begin with a giant sea creature that seemingly irrelevant but at least they bring back later which is another point that yeah I like to yeah my only comment about that sequence um, with uh, when Ang actually sees the thing and starts running away um, like normally that's the kind of thing that in like a a, a normal or a different anime or cartoon, like he would just do that, like for comedy, he just runs super fast across water. Mm. I like that it establishes that he, like he actually could do that. Like that's yeah. not just like a quirk <laughs> of the animation. Like he's actually doing that. It's not just a cartoon moment. Yeah, his face brilliant. is a cartoon moment. Oh yeah, but, one, like, one yeah. of the biggest yeah. ones actually. <laughs> <laughs> like, oh. But like what he's, yeah. But what he's doing is is not. It doesn't break the rules of the the setting at all. Yeah, which I like. Mm-hmm. It's it's true of most of the extreme animation actually. Um, when you now no, you think about it. Uh, with the exception of you know the fa- purely facial expression stuff, everything they do, kind of arm flailing around, they tend to tie into the bending abilities or like leaping off um, high platforms and jumping down from spaces. You know, it's it's Ang carrying Katara in the first episode kind of thing, but it's air bending, so it makes sense. Um, and the same again in the in the air temple when he's jumping. No, down. I just I just mean like in a normal show, like or a different show, that particular moment would have just been played for comedy oh, yeah. and not been. You know what I mean? Yeah. But in this one, it works on both levels. Yeah, it do, it doesn't have to. You don't have to kind of ignore the fact that they're running on water because of course I can run on water. He's using air bending yeah. and like the flailing of yeah. the arms. It's, it's it's neat. <laughs> I like it. And but yeah, they, they they go back to the beach uh, and immediately get captured by well swiftly and efficiently get captured by uh, Kyoshi warriors. Um, which is kind of the focus of this episode, uh, leading to Ang's little display of um, of, of amazing <laughs> power, <laughs> <laughs> unbridled I, elemental fury. Yeah, I, I, you know, that it's the Avatar clearly. <laughs> I, I, love I mean, I think just the fact that he was an airbender was enough. You I know? know, I know, but it's. Just, the the fact that like it goes from being flying you know fifty feet up in the air or whatever it was, um, and landing and just playing with a little little bead it's like yeah um you know truly he will amaze everyone in this village <laughs> um when they're all very i mean it's, you can tell it's a smaller place so they're, they're amazed yeah. by a lot yeah when he becomes a celebrity yeah and he he knows his audience i think i, I mean i'm sure like that trick like impressed all the the young air nomads like when he was around mm-hmm. i mean remember <laughs> A little kid would think that was really cool. Like a, yeah, a little kid like, wouldn't care about the intricacies of bending and whatever. They just like the stupid little tricks you can do. Yeah, yeah, definitely. Um, but it introduces us to the the kind of main 
reason this episode is happening um, is the Kyoshi Warriors and their. First of all, I want to talk about the design because I absolutely love the design of their of their gear, um, taken heavily from uh, actual like real life cultures. Obviously, um, I could do without the tassels because they seem odd to me and out of place. But everything else, I would be perfectly happy wearing that kit, um, which is a kind of thing that comes up later on in the episode. <laughs> Um, it's it's a beautiful design that st- really stands out from everything else we see in the show as well. They're like they didn't fighting have to do. Geisha, kind of. Mm. It's a it's a really they have cool like the geisha style. kind of look, but but they're they're fight ready instead of being because geisha are, are subservient in in Japanese culture, but mm. like they have like that same kind of getup, but are actually like you know have agency in their in their village. Yeah, kind of samurai esque in terms of the uh, focus. Hmm. I mean, then what was the? Uh, oh yeah, then so when everybody in the village is all excited to see Aang, uh, it starts. Um, that that information gets relayed through traders, which I thought was pretty cool. Like you see a fisherman going you know, like, "Oh, the avatars here, cool," and then you like see him trading with like someone from the Earth Kingdom, I believe, and another Earth Kingdom guy talks to somebody who's at a, a Fire Nation soldier who's at a colony, North Kingdom uh, co- colony, and then that gets to Zuko. Uh, and I like how they had the music, like again, what I was saying before, like uh, the musical cues in this episode, I think are actually particularly good. Um, and that was all told through just like, you know, oh, yay, happy, happy. And then it's like slowly like, uh-oh, but wait, wait, this information is getting to somewhere we don't, don't want it to be. Go, and then yeah. Zuko has it and it blows up. So I thought that was all done really well, that montage. Yeah, it was very quick, but they got a lot in uh, that very small space of time. Um, and it made, you know, relative sense. And even some world building, if you really like look yeah, into yeah. it, you Precisely, see like, yeah. the, the division, merchant class, you know. and you know, and his you know, the fish being exchanged for um, money, being exchanged for money, being exchanged for feeding the uh, the prince you're hosting. You know, it's it's it just it's that subtle background stuff that the show does uh, brilliantly. Uh, one of the lesser examples, but it's still there. I I like Zuko's reaction as well. The avatars on Kyoshi. It's like yeah, okay. So of course, plot needs to get in there, but uh, at least it made sense. Um, mm-hmm. And obviously, yeah. Iroh sells the scene as well with his comedy. It's like, you're going to eat that? Like, I'm <laughs> saving it for later. And storms out, typical Zuko style. Yeah, uh, that part always made my dad laugh. <laughs> he liked Iroh. But... Who doesn't? I mean, let's face it, he's got to yeah, be Iroh's everyone's favorite. Dead. He's one of those characters that everyone's favorite, and then they also have their their actual favorite, um, separate from him, because he, just, he <laughs> kind of transcends the series in that way. <laughs> so then Aang kind of become his first time feeling like a celebrity uh, with his little fangirls like grouping and then Katara's jealousy kind of coming coming uh, into it. And it's funny too because I feel like Aang is he's such a young soul like like before we were saying like just his trick he just wants like Katara like kind of almost like that in a way he's kind of a younger brother to Katara in some capacity sometimes because like when they're first on Appa he's like look at this trick and like you're not looking like look at what I'm doing you know yeah. and he does that again when um I think he's flying um he's uh riding the uh elephant koi and, he, and he's gets sad when she's like walking away so um again that's gonna be another thing I'm gonna bring up about a counter to why yeah. I don't think those two should yeah but okay yeah. <laughs> we'll get there we'll yeah, we'll <laughs> her jealousy and, and his fangirls and all that yeah, no, it's a, it's a bit of, again, it comes back to the whole kind of ham-fisted scene side of, of things for me. Like, it, it, it's not bad, it's just, it's a bit, it's a bit, um, well, it's cartoony. Silly. And, it's silly, I mean, yeah, yeah. Yeah, I mean, yeah. I mean, and, and it's, that doesn't, like you said, it doesn't make it bad. It's just, um, it's clearly not going to be, like, on your uh, list of highlights for the season. Yeah, <laughs> but yeah, I mean, it's... Oh, wait, real quick, I forgot, we completely passed Foaming Mouth Guy, who is, like, oh, one yeah. of the, yes. the bigger, funnier yeah. moments of Avatar yeah. ever. Like, that's that's what I, yeah, like, <laughs> yeah. You were going to get into that? Okay, good, go. There, no, I, I wasn't really going to get into it, but that's why okay. I said, like, early on when I teased, there's two different kinds of fangirls. we got the Yoshi <laughs> Warriors, and then we've got, oh, you know, like, uh, we've got frothing at the mouth fan, like, uh, who actually, he's not quite a cabbage man, which we'll get into yeah. later, but he does come back, like, later yeah, in the I show. I think that's one of the so things, that, it? It speaks, yeah. Um, yeah, it's that, actually a relevant saying, point, episode... though, because it, it's part of um, a kind of, not tradition, but, you know, a thing that this show does, where it brings in random background people that have, like, a two second mo- five second moment and then they'll disappear and they'll come up again later on in the series with like a develop like the next stage of their little evolution or whatever um and this is yeah. this is one of those it's a lesser version but he's one of these uh, characters um and as stupid as it is i never fail to laugh at that or at least chuckle Dude, yeah because it's, it's, it's hilarious it's like where the hell does that come from and it's like the avatar <laughs> <laughs> Like, like I was saying back in episode two, like I like though that's what is like brought me back to Avatar were like those little moments, like you know the sorry from Aang in episode two, but then like this moment too, like things like that consistently happen through the show that just make me like that's what makes me like push 
to like the love yeah. uh, uh, section of, of it. Even even during that silly um, kind of montage we we're talking about a second ago, um, it's not one of the characters that comes back in any way in the future. But uh, the artist who's kind of just sat there, yeah. I, the, the deadpan look on his face as he just the, he gives up. <laughs> it's just it's I love it. It's like, well, I'm out. <laughs> just walks off. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> it sells an otherwise you know irritating scene for me. Not irritating, like I can't stand it, but you know it would have been like okay, moving on, you know, skip this. It, it just like it, he makes it, um, and again, never see him again. But there's that little moment, that si- simple yeah, facial expression sells nice. the scene. Um, it's brilliant. Uh, but that leads into the kind of the proper meat of the episode, um, which is the soccer Kyoshi warrior yeah, soccer kind soccer. of yeah. line of uh, of stories read. I I love the introduction of those, uh, or not the introduction, I guess the the reintroduction of them to the the episode with soccer going to the training area. Uh, I, I really enjoy that scene. What do you guys think? Oh, uh, yeah, I like uh, that she also brings up, like I was mentioning before, that they don't use power to fight, but they mm. use um, redirection uh, as a way of uh, fighting against like uh, their enemies, which is something that Sokka will need to learn because, like we were saying before, I think Matt brought up, is that he uh, Katara kind of is annoyed by him because he doesn't even do his role that, that well. Right. Um, yeah. And he doesn't either, so he does need to learn this kind of training. Um, as we see that he's not a power fighter really either. When we see him, you know, starting to get into more scuffles uh, later in the season, especially when he gets his proper training in book three, uh, the way he fights is not, you know, straight up he- head up brawler style or something like that. It's what he what he needs to learn is from redirecting uh, methods done by these women kiyoshi yeah redirecting of energy and like the precision strikes which uh, which he proves himself even in this episode uh very good at yeah. um he's a yeah. fast learner which, uh, this is one of the episodes where it gets across that um soccer learns very quickly um and he's willing to learn he just is a bit bullheaded in the initial approach to it which kind of sets him back every now and then this is the episode another episode of growth for soccer actually when you think about it uh he <laughs> four, four episodes in he's, he still had the most development um which i enjoy uh, but that scene in particular, you know, it, it really sells Suki as well. You know, this uh, this character has come in first time we've seen her. She's another one that returns in the future, which we'll get into later. Um, but she's got a lot of personality, um, uh, which kind of really sells her as a character in such a short space of time. She doesn't really do much, but what she does do is is, is enjoyable. It's funny. It's 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 relevant to the main cast, you know. Uh, and she's got a really cool um, character design, you know, with the with the Kyoshi kit. Uh, and she Quick question, completely are there... schools soccer as well, which is enjoyable. <laughs> yeah, are there adult Kiyoshi here? Like, did we explain why there's no adult Kiyoshi? Uh, we, we don't no, see I don't them. Think it, I don't uh... think it does explain that because, like, but this is kind of a thing about Avatar. It's like wherever you go, it's like teenagers are the ones getting stuff done. Yeah. Think about it. Yeah. <laughs> um, aside from, with the sole exception of Boston Say, and even with, then, in some ways, or, <laughs> or Boomy. Yeah. 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 It's like, do you want to help oh, now? Boomy. Yes, please. <laughs> that moment, for example, <laughs> on the wall. Um, but uh, the North uh, Water Tribe is another example of one where the adults have relevance. Um, oh, that's true. They have more oh, agency. Yeah. yeah. So they're, they're here so. and there, but um, you know, it, it's still well, a show for kids. So yeah, that... but yeah, we get into that later, though. But like, really, like even there, like um, the chief or whatever his title is, like gives command of the situation to somebody more or less oh, yeah. the gang's age. So you know, I mean. Oh yeah, that guy sure. that sounds always a little mission. Yeah, that's, yeah. yeah. But yeah, we'll get there. We'll get, we'll get, we'll get there. But um, but yeah, it's it's definitely a, a I wouldn't say problem, but it stands out a bit. Um, you know, why is this is this the way it is? Um, we don't know. It's related. It's related to kids. It's related to kids. Yeah, precisely. But you know, for the most part, we can assume that there are some adults in the background that we just don't see on screen. Um, yeah, I, I like that. Uh, that soccer gets his ass kicked as well. It, it's uh, it's a poignant, again, a little bit hamfisted, but still poignant um, addressing of the whole lesson that the episode is trying to teach. You know, um, we are, you know, our, our characteristics and our abilities, and nothing more. Um, everything else is trimming that c- can affect, but doesn't necessarily affect who we are. Uh, and that's the lesson he's trying to teach. But he is, you know, as I said before, willing to learn. Um, he goes through this humiliation, but he then comes back for more, and learns from it. Mm-hmm. And then for Katara, we get more impressions of her being the controlling mother type again, and also yeah. finding a little jealousy with, with Aang's uh, celebrity and all that. Which, um, again, like that's something we'll see more and more of from Katara, uh, but that's the impression that we get from her so far. Yeah, yeah, she's uh, with the whole Una- Unagi situation. Like it's, it's Aang being, we see a lot of Aang's immaturity here. Um, again, it goes back to the whole silliness stuff. But at least there is some relevance to the overall plot here, because you know the Unagi comes back later. But 
but Aang is being very much an idiot uh, in this moment. Um, but yeah. which is you know good. It introduces a character flaw to him because so far he's been very um, uh, not bland, but he's been kind of goody two shoes of a character, which which gets boring very quickly. But I, I'm not a big fan of the way they did it. But at least they introduced a flaw to his character in this point. It was the right time to do yeah. it, even if not the right way. Well, what's interesting about this this uh, episode is that it kind of has two endings. It has like two third acts because you would think, you know, after the Unagi conflict and like they kind of like come to terms again, mm. it, it could kind of end right there because like okay, the like, and Katara stuff is resolved. But then like then we get the second ending, which is like the actual battle. Yeah, um, I mean, in which, comes, which I thought in comes I felt like oh, it's <laughs> ended. Like after the Unagi conflict, I was like okay, it's ended. Maybe it's like a two. I actually even when I was watching this, I was like, is this one of those two parter episodes? Because I was like, that was like a ending right there like they felt like an ending and then they continue it, it to the could level. easily have been but given the fact that it's such a short you know it's still only 20 minutes they, it doesn't feel like they yeah. rushed anything here you know it, it it's a quick telling of a small story but it doesn't go on it doesn't need to drag it on um it could have been a two-parter but it, i think it works as without one um but yeah zuka comes riding in on his rhinos immediately after the unagi crisis um and that leads to before we get to the battle though um there's the the thing with uh katara's healing um it's not quite her yeah. healing bending but you know, it's it's a kind of hint of what's to come with her. Actually, she's effectively healing Ang with the with the extraction of the water from his throat. Um, but you know, it's the first time we've seen uh, bending used that way um, at this point. It's you know another bit him of... her pulling out the water out of his lungs. Yeah, yeah. It's another bit of a of an interesting spin on it. You know, and so it's not all martial arts. Sometimes it is just simple manipulation. Uh, yeah. yeah, yeah, which is just nice. life lifestyle, yeah. especially for water bending. <clears throat> Uh, as we see later on. If anything, that's how it should be used most often, except for maybe fire bending, except for maybe like making yourself a fire when you're out in the wilderness or something like that. Yeah, but most of them are practical uses. Like they wouldn't be used just for fighting one another. Hmm. Yeah. 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 And just the stuff you can do with waters in particular to me is just so cool. That's yeah. why it's my favorite. <laughs> yeah. I mean, in case you hadn't noticed, I'm sure you have, but the uh, different um, emblems we have on our frames down uh, on the overlay here um, speak to our preferred not necessarily preferred uh bending choice but uh what we would choose if we had the option um with matt and antoine going for water and myself going for earth i'm very i flip-flop um oh you're other earth day. oh wow, i didn't i, I flip-flop every other day between earth and air but uh i settle on if i had to choose if i was forced to <laughs> choose like one, the complete opposite I, like, link I, to between the complete opposites. I know but wow. it's it's the it's just the it, they both fit for me um, in different ways. I would be an earthbender that earthbends like an airbender, um, or vice versa. You know what? Uh, like, uh... I, I think I think you you want the practicality of what you could do as an earthbender, but your personality, I would say, is much more air than earth. Like completely, I I, I can't really see you as like the stubborn earthbender type. Characteristic wise, no, you're absolutely right. I'd definitely be the airbender in that situation. But um, in terms of my preferred style of uh, yeah. to combat, it would be Earth, and I like the what you can do on like a base level. But anyway, that's a whole different other discussion. We'll, like, we'll have to part yeah, that for a different video. But yeah, I just yeah. wanted to mention it. <laughs> um, but yeah, so we get the cool little uh, uh, the battle. Uh, yeah, I love love the the music because it's a very um, like mellow. I believe the harp is what's being played uh, in yeah. the back, um, and it's just. It feels cinematic to me. Like I feel like that music really like sets the tone, and um, in a really with a lot of gravitas. Yeah. And I always like like I think one of my favorite sequence or favorite uh, scenes ever was in well, not ever but fight scenes is uh, in Kung Fu Hustle the heart uh fight scene. I don't know if you guys saw Kung Fu Hustle, but I there's a scene heard. where. These gentlemen are, um, these two fighters have a harp and they're just playing boom, 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 boom. But it's like a whole like sequence, but that's kind of like what's happening here. Um, and it's just something that, I don't know, like it just tugs at my soul. Like music in general, but this particular music like really tugged at me the right way to establish like um, uh, this battle that's about to happen. It's a really nice musical piece for this fight uh, the framing of the initial shots in it as well with zuko it's almost a bit it's a bit western it doesn't go the whole this is a western shot you know it doesn't scream western, well it's got the, the same kind twang of, yeah the same kind of get, panning shot yeah. of like a long distant glowing like street and such it's 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 avatar does a good job of of taking from different um cultures and different yeah. um, cinematic styles and <clears> putting <throat> their own twist on it and uh, this is a good example of that um, following along with that idea the framing of the scenes and like the look of the village help with that sort of vibe as well yeah not just the music yeah it's, it's, it's the, whole the, ma the marriage of the two yeah gives that impression yeah it's really cool um and they again they consistently do that throughout the entire series and as we'll point out as we go along um i love the actual battle itself as well um something i have to mention because i will forget it otherwise uh 
when um, the Kyoshi Warriors attack, I it's a small thing, again, but I absolutely adore the fact that it wasn't Sokka and it wasn't Suki that took Kazuko off that mount. You know, the one that got a hit in first was just a random Kyoshi Warrior in the background. That is just yeah. it's so good it's... because you never see no name characters being having a presence in That's these true. scenes. It's uh, really the, cool. This this show is good about it, and arguably Korra is even better about it. Yeah, um, which we can get into later. But about I really non-characters like characters doing stuff. Yeah, yeah. yeah about cause... people doing about people doing accomplishing in the background what they're supposed to be logically capable of um, mm-hmm. that you usually like when a, like a random guard in the show normally shows up, they'll be knocked out with like no fuss. Like mm-hmm. in this one, in this show people actually have skills and they're allowed to demonstrate that. Yeah, and they have a presence as a result. You know, these Kyoshi Boys aren't just flickers of animation in the background. They are, you know, any one of them theoretically could jump in and have an effect on the scene. You know, Zuko was paying attention to these two, so someone jumped in and struck, struck him from behind and took him off the mount. You know, it, it's it's a small thing, but it really does sell the kind of, the believability of everything. Yeah. And, and yeah. the, the threat for Zuko as well. You know, he feels like he's not just going to casually walk in, I'm, I'm the villain, so I'm untouchable, you know, unless I've got, unless a hero breaks my plot armor. You know, he can be hit. Um, but that doesn't mean it detracts from the main characters. I mean, Suki yeah. leaps in like a ascendant angel and just strikes him, or fails to, but goes for the strike against him, which is consummately awesome. What I like, too, is the scene between uh, Suki and uh, Sokka and how, especially the ending where she gives him a kiss on the cheek and goes like, you know, I'm a but I'm a girl too. Like it's not. There's not a separation between the two, where you can call me. Oh, like I. Sorry, I didn't like uh, think that you were a warrior because you're a girl. She's like, well, I can be both. You know, I can mm. be both of those things at, at the same time. And also, we get the impression of Sokka already. Like he's like a ladies' man for some reason. But you know, <laughs> pe- girls like him. Like that's just a thing. You know, yeah. that happens in the show for whatever reason. But I think maybe it's, it's I that think Mohawk. It, I think it works with. Uh, or is that is that top nine? I think it works with Suki because she's he's she, he's proven himself. Not an equal immediately, but like a, a potential equal very early on, um, despite having been completely outclassed in the early in, introduction. You know, it's been like a day. And also willing to listen to her. Yeah, and, yeah, and, willing and to learn. apologize, yeah. you know, showing that he's actually a man and, you know, isn't just a petulant child that will whine when he loses. Um, he stands up and he, you know, he bows and says, I would be honored to learn from you. Uh, the same day he was defeated by it after having been such callous, you know, he learns quickly. He learns quickly on the mental side and, you know, the, the emotional maturity, and he learns quickly on the physical side because we see him get a good shot in on Suki um, and them, you know, able to actually properly spar just to, with a day's practice, which, yeah, isn't particularly realistic in terms of the martial arts side, but uh, it sells what the character later goes on to do um, in the future because he does kind of get a nice um, power scaling progression throughout the show. Particularly later, he needs really to later have, on, but in the middle as well. He needs he needs to have a kind of victory in this episode just so you can see some sort of progression. Like otherwise, that you don't you don't really feel for him. Like he's like, you know, accomplishing that much. So mm-hmm. it's like a tangible result. Which, like you're right, it wouldn't really make sense for him to be, and he's certainly not better than her in any regard. Mm-hmm. And he probably wouldn't score a hit that early on. But it's rewarding, like to the audience, to see that. Yeah, mm-hmm. and it kind of brings the characters together as well. You know, it's not—it's a character moment, just, not just a "aha, I've beaten my antagonist" kind yeah. of thing. Yeah, yeah. it brings them. It, it also is like a sort of realistic flirty moment with her, like wanting to deny that he did anything yeah. right, and then like press <laughs> that kind of stuff would happen. Yeah, so it, it's, it's cool. It's, it's real. Yeah. yeah. I also like the uh, it's a common thing with like hero stories like this that <clears throat> you put yourself or you put people in danger when you're you know, as valuable as a hero. Like if you're Superman, you know, people don't necessarily always attack Superman. They attack the people or they attack people who are close to him. The whole uh, ugly ego thing. Yeah. 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 So I think we, I like that we we're getting that here where <clears throat> Angus starting to discover like, you know, I'm putting people like we got that a little bit with the um, the the southern village. But we're getting that like again here and we're, we're reinforcing that, you know, with, with great power comes great responsibility. <laughs> power and but I, I, I like that. I like that. That I always like that that trope within superhero um, or hero mythology is that, you know, it's not so much you who are in danger, but everyone else, you know, that, yep. that you have to worry about. Yeah. yeah. It's um, it's a cliche, but I've often said like throughout my life that cliche doesn't mean bad. Like if you're exactly. doing it, right. like, yeah. like things become cliche for a reason mm-hmm. because right. you know, well, I don't even need to go into it. It should, it should be obvious. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> and yeah, you're right. It is, it is a moment where, yeah, it's a bit okay on the nose, but, but you know, it's relevant. It's relevant to the story. You know, it's relevant to his character. He is someone who is aware of what goes on around him. And this is a moment where he was temporarily blinded to that, even against the warnings of Katara, you know, he was focused on his ego, which is very anti Ang. 
but you know he's a kid he can make these mistakes but he learns he learns very quickly he sees this he goes oh god what have i done and then he immediately goes okay what well, katara what's your, your, your suggestion we need to leave and he's like right and then they move out you know it's it's a resolution to this uh this single episodes kind of conflict that will then it, it also gives a plot reason for why they don't linger anywhere else or very many other right. places for later on you know it gives that whole okay we need to keep moving on and on and on you know it's a good it's a good reason for that beyond the obvious that they have to get to the to the end destination um it serves multiple pur- purposes like everything in this show or nearly everything mm-hmm. so it sells it to me um I, I just wanted to i wanted to mention because i didn't know if we brought this up or not or i don't think we did but i like when he hits zuko with like the fans like how he can how like bending can be augmented mm-hmm. like using specific weaponry um like him being an airbender and using the fans is like a cool bit of of it's like maybe the first example of that but yeah. it's a really good one it is really cool um i also like immediately after that he gets like a it's like a two seconds uh, moment of where he's like sad and resigned is like Ugh. and then he runs off you know it, almost like that just that hit with pained him to do because that's the first time we've seen some, him actually you know directly strike yeah. someone with his air i think i can't think of yeah i think I think you're right, but I, I also had the impression that he didn't necessarily know it was going to be that powerful, like the force of the blow. Like, um, I don't think he really realized, like, like like a kid that doesn't know his own strength, yeah. sort of. Yeah, that makes sense you as know? well. Like, or even as well, just the damage to the building that he's doing, you know, that could have been it. But it, you know, whatever yeah. it is, you know, there's a moment of, of uh, registering the what he's done, effectively, whatever it is that he's registering. It yeah. takes that like, two-second moment you, to do it. Yeah, it's like the polar opposite of, like, Zhao. Like, he's yeah. not relishing anything. <laughs> Yeah, um, and then he's immediately off, like running off to try and solve the next crisis. And meanwhile, in the background, again, we talked about it a bit before. There are Kyoshi warriors fighting no-name firebenders. You know, the, it's not just these three people in the entire street. You know, this is a—it's a small-scale battle, but it's still a battle, and and we see that. You know, throwing of the uh, of the um, fan. I don't know why that word escaped me. Uh, at the firebender helmet is uh, is just a small thing, but it happens, and it keep it, in between these shots of the ca- main characters running to their individual scenes. It's you know it's it's padding that should be there, and it's good to see it. And again, really good animation. Uh, mm-hmm. the, the, you, you, uh, adds adds that sense of realism to the world. Yeah, you said last episode as well that the animation have, uh, was a big uptick for that one. I feel like it's worth noting for this one as well. It does kind of drop down as the general quality, but they keep it for the uh, for the actual fights. Um, they always put their most attention to the actual bending sequences and the combat sequences in general, which are... Yeah, there was a particular moment where Sokka, when he was fighting a Suki, I felt like that was really well animated. Yeah. Um, I can't remember, it was in the dojo, I can't remember specifically what scene, but that one was like, I was like, wow, that looks like a real person moving. I think it's when they uh, do, she ties up his foot with his hand the first time she's kind of schooling him in how clearly outclassed he is um when he's kind of hopping around and yeah yeah it was that one thing. it was yeah. when he was like i can fight you yeah yeah it was, that one. <laughs> it was really well it was yeah it's, it's brilliantly done and it's, it, the whole battle is kind of well animated even though the rest of the episode clearly had they've kind of scaled back the um the, what they can do with the budget um so even even an episode where they've 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 not d- bring, brought their best they still where it counts done very well um and it's worth noting they they knew where to spend their money mm. like they weren't able they perhaps weren't able to have the um, same consistent level of quality for the overall presentation as in the previous episode but they were able to highlight like where they wanted the money to go and it went there and did its job yeah and does it very well very seamlessly as well like you notice the quality drop but it's not like oh god this looks terrible it's just a case of okay it's not as good yeah, that's... Right, it's not like Final Fantasy where you yeah. have like this beautiful <laughs> cutscene and then you go to like little sprites the next yeah. and like what yeah. was that? <laughs> yeah, no, definitely. It's uh, it's it's just really good. It's never bad. This show is what I'd like to say, uh, or very, uh, very, yeah. very rarely. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, it's, it's like maybe two bad episodes. Yeah, maybe in the entire thing. Maybe one and a half. Yeah. <laughs> But yeah, um, and then the the last thing of the closing up the episode is that the Unagi comes back and becomes relevant um, in this uh, final climax where Aang, despite the fact that he agrees with Katara that they need to leave, he comes and, and sprays the water with uh, with the Unagi's hose kind of breath, um, which yeah, which puts out the, the village and, and helps alleviate some of the crisis. You know, which is Aang. You know, he cares about doing the most he can, even when he knows he's got to do something he doesn't want to do. Like, okay, I've got to run away. I don't want to do that. But no, I can do better. And then leaps into the Again, rather, I was like, I kept expecting him when he hits the water. That's going to be concrete, bang. <laughs> but no, he just goes straight in, obviously. Um, I imagine he was airbending ahead. And then you have the, the, the village uh, elder uh, yeah. saying thank so That's a good like final thing, like, you know, yeah. representing through him, you know, like, that they're thankful. 
thank you avatar as well it, it's uh, i think the first time he's actually referred to as avatar by someone who wasn't using it as kind of like a you are an object you need to grab you know it's it's ang is the avatar in katara and Sokka's eyes but we don't see someone who sees him oh it's the avatar you know as this figure um uh until that point it's cool it's a it's a good end and then they just they as they tend to do in most episodes they fly off in upper to the tune of some lovely music yeah sure most episodes are then flying off of yeah. that one. <laughs> but it works you know um and yeah and that's uh that's episode four the warriors of kiyoshi uh do we have anything else to bring or are we are we closing up mm-hmm. nope okay uh i'm ready for i still don't have an outro goodbye great jedi 91 see you guys later that's why I'm bound to lay. Remember, guys, be water. <laughs> <laughs>